Hello everyone. You know, they say third time's charm, so we'll see if it works this time. Uh, I've been trying to record this for a while. Uh, Shadow is downstairs wondering who I'm talking to uh, as I talk to you folks. Um, just a reminder that um, all activities at the church have been canceled through the end of the month, at least, um, as we uh, continue to get updates about the COVID-19 virus. We will make adjustments uh, according to to what we hear. So the next time we are able to gather together may be April sometime. Um, we'll do our best to keep you informed and to keep in, in contact with you as much as we can uh, through Facebook, through email, through posting on the, the church uh, webpage, the website, and of course phone calls uh, for those that we know are not online. And I would encourage you to please pass along any messages you get from us to, uh, to others, um, especially those that, that you don't know are not online. We wanna make sure uh, everyone gets the news from the church. Um, we'd rather have them hear it twice than not at all. So please do that. Um, during this time, the church office, uh, as of right now, will remain open from nine to noon Monday through Thursday. Uh, if you or others um, have a need, if there's a need in the community, uh, please let us know. Um, some folks with due to health issues, uh, compromised immune systems, uh, the elderly may not be comfortable running some errands, going to the grocery store, pharmacy, whatever. Um, and we have some volunteers that are willing to help with those, uh, those errands. So please let the office know if uh, if you have need of something or if someone else does and we will do our best to meet those needs um, also uh, if you are willing to uh, run some of those errands please call the office and let us know um, and we'll we'll make sure we keep a list of folks that are able to help um, in this time i'd like to uh, um, encourage you to, to call and check in on uh, your friends and, and family and neighbors, fellow church members. Uh, while many of us are connected online and, and we can easily communicate with others and, and get involved in a lot of things uh, through the internet, there's uh, some folks that are not online and uh, especially uh, some of the elderly and they're not able to get out they're not uh, have, have, don't have access to all that kind of thing, uh, so make sure you place a phone call to them and check on them and uh, ask if there's something that we can do. You know, uh, a phone call to them can mean the world. So check on check on everyone, um, and don't forget those folks that are in nursing homes and retirement communities. Most of those facilities are on lockdown, and so no visitors. Um, but they can still receive mail. And I know in talking with uh, one of the nurses at the Rolling Fields Nursing Home where my aunt resides, uh, they will disinfect the mail before it is given to the, re the residents. So um, send those cards and brighten their day. And of course, uh, those that are have phones uh, and uh, are would love to hear from you. Uh, I know I was uh, talking to Sandy Foltz uh, yesterday, I guess it was, and, and she uh, she was glad to he get a phone call. So don't hesitate to, to give people a phone call. Um, and let them know you're thinking of them. Let them know you uh, are praying for them. These are just a couple ways that uh, we can be the church in our community during uh, this difficult time. Uh, we may need to be physically distant and apart from one another, but we must stay connected in the midst of that. Um, and in the midst of this uh, uncertainty um, of the time that we're in, we all need to be reaching out to one another, uh, especially uh, if we truly want to be the church of Jesus Christ. Um, so think about how you can be Jesus for someone during this time whether it's a phone call or uh, some prayers, maybe a card, uh, running an errand for, for a neighbor. Um, just, just think of what you can do. Someone uh, 
picked up some of the flowers that were out in front of the floral shop here in town. Uh, they were often offering them to the community, uh, and we appreciate that. They picked up some, and um, they gave some to some neighbors just to brighten their day, and uh, um, I'm sure that uh, they're still enjoying them. And so I encourage you to, to do that, to reach out in any way you can uh, to your friends and neighbors, uh, and most of all, uh, pray for them. Pray for them. Um, you, If you have a church directory at home, which hopefully you all do, that is a, a good way to pray for folks. Just start at the beginning and go all the way through as you uh, pray for each family that is listed there. Um, and hey, if you had somebody you haven't talked to for a while, maybe give them a call, see how they're doing. Uh, they'd appreciate that. And uh, if any of you would like to have a Lenten devotional from the church, uh, you didn't get a chance to pick one up, please call the office. We have plenty there and uh, can make sure that you... Uh, you get one, whether we deliver it or uh, uh, you plan a time to come down and pick one up. So I encourage you to do that. Um, there's lots of time for prayer now, lots of time for uh, extra scripture reading and and uh, spending some time with, uh, time with God. So I encourage you to, to do that. A couple updates on folks, if you haven't heard already. Um, got some great news. Uh, Tom, Holly, and Big Brother Bradley and Grandma Jana ha have welcomed John Wesley Losey. Uh, he arrived on Wednesday morning and uh, March 18th. Eight pounds, 15 ounces, 21 inches long. He and Mom were doing well, and uh, they are home now. So congratulations to the Losey family, and uh, what, a, what a precious gift from God. Uh, especially uh, during this time, to have this uh, new life in our midst and, and uh, God's promise of hope that is in that new life. So we, uh, we look forward to meeting you, John Wesley, when, you, uh, when you're back at church with all the rest of us. Uh, another concern or update, uh, Vera Peters received news Friday that she has... Um, some small cancerous spots on her uh, liver and lungs. Um, definite treatment plans have not been uh, decided upon yet, but she will be needing some chemo. Um, so be in prayer for, uh, for Vera during this time. And if you uh, um, think about it, give her a call, let her know you're praying for her, send her a card. Uh, I'm sure she would appreciate the encouragement during this time. Um, those are the, the current concerns I definitely know of. Um, I'm sure there are still many others that, uh, uh, that are out there, and, and the important thing is God knows who they are. But let us, uh, let us pause and have a, a time of prayer together. Dear God, we, uh, we come to you today with... Uh, with hearts that are, are and minds that are struggling to make sense of of what is happening in our world right now, and um, we uh, uh, we have had our lives uh, turned upside down in a way that that we have never experienced before, and and uh, it's hard. It's hard for us to 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 make sense of it all. In so many ways, we, we have always thought we were uh, immune from dealing with such things as this pandemic. Uh, that only happened in other places, not in our country. But here it is. It's on our doorstep. And we, like every other place in this world, is struggling to deal with it. And so we just, we just pray, dear God, that you would... Uh, that you would take hold of this virus, that you would heal those that have been stricken by it, that you would comfort the families of those who have already lost loved ones, that you would give wisdom and knowledge to the doctors and nurses uh, as they treat it, to the scientists as they strive to come up with a vaccine. And, and uh, dear God, uh, we just pray that uh, they would seek out and, and be able to find through your wisdom and through your guidance uh, a treatment for this. 
And for those that are struggling with uh, loss of employment, um, with uh, with loss of, of contact with, with other human beings because of, of the need to keep to ourselves, we, we, just, uh, we just pray for them, dear God, and ask that you would touch their lives, that they might uh, be aware of your presence in powerful and mighty ways. Dear God, we trust you. We trust you for all that is to come. We know that you will not leave us nor forsake us. And even though at times in the midst of this virus, it seems that we have been forsaken, we know that you are still there. And we trust in you and in your timing, dear God, and, and trust that all of your love continues to surround us. And we know that your spirit is still with us. And we lift up Vera too, dear God, during this time that she struggles with the cancer and, and uh, give, her, give her your sense of peace, dear God, that, that passes all understanding. Allow her to know that even though um, there is going to be treatment ahead, that you will be with her every step of the way. And that you will guide and direct her doctors and nurses as they care for her. Be with her family that they may continue to, to support and encourage her during this time. And uh, dear God, we just, we just ask that you lay your healing hands upon her and that she would be surrounded by your love and know your presence beyond any doubt. And we give you praise and thanks, dear God, for the, the gift of life, new life that you have given to the Losey family. We thank you for John Wesley's birth and and uh, for his health and wellness and for Holly's health and wellness. And we just praise you for this new life, this gift of hope in the midst of these struggling days. Um, dear God, we, we ask your blessing upon this child that, uh, and his family that, uh, that he might grow into faith, that he might grow into a relationship with you, with you and be able to be your witness in all things, and that he might be able to share your love with the world that he, he comes in contact with. We just praise you, dear God, for that, that precious gift, a gift that we all needed during this day, these days. And uh, we have so many other reasons to praise you, even in the midst of this time Dear God, we know that uh, many other generations have have struggled with uh, monumental tasks and and hard times. We we think of uh, those that went through the depression and and world wars, and um, they didn't have the the blessings of technology that we have today to be in communication with one another. They weren't uh, so easily uh, entertained uh, with. Um, with TV and, and internet and, and all those modern things that we have today. And if our ancestors could, could survive and flourish, dear God, so can we. Through your grace and through your mercy and through your strength, we can make it through because we know that you are with us, that you are with us and that you continue to love and strengthen each and every one of us. Dear God, we ask that uh, in your great mercy you hear all the prayers of our hearts. And we ask as well that you would hear us all pray together, just as Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to share with you a few words. Um, 
sorry, no, no slides today. I'm not that technologically savvy. Um, you all uh, probably know these words of a favorite hymn, and I'd encourage you that are online, look up, uh, look up a YouTube video of some group performing this. I'm sure that, that they're out there and, uh, um, and you'll, uh, you'll be able to hear the whole song and be able to, uh, be comforted and strengthened by it. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Like all of us, um, I wrestled with what is happening uh, around us. From the concerns with the virus to the very self-centered uh, reaction uh, of so many people hoarding hand sanitizer and toilet paper and whatever else. Uh, in the face of such things, our, our faith can be challenged and stretched, almost to breaking. Uh, we, we do become tired and weak and worn, just as that old hymn says. We feel as if we are in the midst of a storm in the night. As we struggle in the storm, we... Do we still believe that our, our God is in control? Can we still proclaim our faith? And how do we do that? As happens so often when we struggle with our faith, the words of the psalmist seem to say things so very well. And this week, the words of a familiar psalm almost seem custom-made. These words are, are most often heard when people need comforted in times of sorrow and loss, but they are saying so much more than just words of comfort. These words were written as a statement of faith in the midst of life, in the midst of all life. And I know that uh, you are probably all pretty familiar with these words. You've probably heard them before. Uh, so I'd invite you to join me with these words from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These words provide comfort and strength to believers in all sorts of situations. Um, it's simplest and, and still most complete interpretation is as a song of trust. The power and enduring re relevance of this psalm is the fact that it pulls no punches. God's presence my, may be trusted equally in green pastures and still waters or in the valley of the shadow of death. And we see this in its use of two key words here, though and through, the same word except one letter. David, the innocent shepherd boy turned king, knew the truth of the word though. He knew about the reality of life's obstacles and, and problems. There, there's no if about the reality of life's hardships. Life isn't all loaded tables, overflowing cups, or green pastures. Sometimes our hair isn't anointed with oil, but with grime and grease or even sweat and blood. 
Sometimes we're not lying in green pastures, but floundering in the mud and the muck. Sometimes we're not resting by the shore of still waters, but we're struggling in the valley of the shadow of death. Every one of us have valleys. Some that life, that life gives us and others, you know, we dig ourselves through the choices that we make. But while we're walking, and the Bible does say walking, not running through the valley of the shadow, the Bible teaches us that God is with us and that the God who, who is with us bears all the sufferings and the pains of the world and the hurts of our scared and scarred souls. God is with us in whatever we face. For the Christian, the cross becomes a symbol of the agony endured by both creation and the creator. The cross reminds us that God walks with us through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Though none of us gets out of life without walking through the valleys, the psalmist makes it plain that God does not intend for us to stay there forever. The valley of the shadow is something that we go through. Valleys are not resting places, but passageways. We can walk through our problems. We can walk through our sorrows. We can walk through our pain. We can walk through our screw-ups. What Psalm 23 promises us is that in all of these journeys, the Lord will walk through with us. We won't be alone. Now, many, many people have found comfort and strength in the words of Psalm 23. And, and if we make these words our words, we affirm that we do not need to worry about our lives or our deaths or anything else. God will provide. And God's provision is grounded in the reality of God's reign. These words speak of trust in God rather than ourselves. And in times of grief and, and sorrow, times where we are overwhelmed with the, the, the pain and the struggles of, of this world, Psalm 23 reminds us that the Lord is indeed our shepherd. And as our shepherd, the Lord will provide for us and guide us through the storms of life, whatever they may be. Psalm 23 affirms that, that God is the source of all food and drink and security because first and foremost, we belong forever to God's household. Because of that, our lives are transformed. Daily realities cannot be taken for granted and are certainly not to be treated as rewards that we have earned. This psalm is an invitation to live under God's rule and in solidarity with all of God's children. To make these words our own is a profoundly radical affirmation of the faith that transforms our lives and our world, even in the midst of an overwhelming storm. The psalmist affirms that our, our human life depends solely on God. All that we are or ever will be is only because of God. And because God is the only necessity of life, even in the midst of an overwhelming storm, our faith can remain strong. Psalm 23 gives us words to live by each and every day of our lives as we are reminded that the Lord is our shepherd, our provider, and our guide each and every day. May you allow the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great shepherd, to lead you 
through all of life, whether it be the valley of the shadow of death or the mountaintops of joy or somewhere in between, which is where we spend most of our times. May you know the comfort and the strength of his presence always. May you allow him to take your hand and lead you through. And when you do, you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Dear God, we, we thank you for your presence that is always with us. We thank you that you provide for us again and again. And that even now, in the midst of these trying days, you will provide for us. You are providing for us. Help us to remember your presence that is always with us. And help us to share our statement of faith, our hope, and our belief that you are indeed with us every step of the way. Even when the path is rocky and when the waters run deep, dear God, you are with us. We thank you and we praise you for that precious blessing and for these words of hope. May we continue to turn to you in all things. And may we give you the praise and the glory and the honor through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Gang, it's, it's been an experience to basically preach to myself since I have the phone set with the reverse camera. Um, I guess now I know what you all have to go through every week, although you don't get to see my face this close. Um, but I hope you're all smiling because obviously I'm laughing a little bit. Um, and my prayers uh, of sympathy to you all for having to look at this puss uh, uh, every week. Um, but it, this will have to do for now. Um, and praise God that we have this capability. Um, to share with one another and to be together and worship this way. Uh, I encourage you to continue to reach out to your friends and neighbors and uh, especially those that um, cannot get out, uh, that don't have the technology. Make sure you reach out and let them know that, that you're there and that if they have a need, they can call. Uh, and please know that the church is there. If, uh, if there is a need, uh, call us, let us know. Uh, if you can't get anyone at the office, uh, you have my cell phone numbers. It's uh, it's published on the on the website anyhow. Uh, if you don't have it, and uh, give me a call. We'll do what we can to help in any way, shape, or form that we can. Um, and if you have ideas uh, for ways that we can continue to be the church during this time, give us a call and let us know. Um, we all. Uh, need to come together, work together, keeping that physical six-foot boundary, but coming together as one body, uh, united in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to help our community and our world through this time of trial. And uh, may we continue to claim our hope and our salvation in Jesus Christ. Uh, until we meet again, friends, uh, be blessed. Remember to wash your hands. Uh, don't touch your face. And um, uh, proclaim God's, God's glory. Because even in the midst of these days, he is with us and will continue to be with us every moment. Uh, have a blessed day, blessed week. And uh, may, God's, may God's presence be known in your life in many ways many ways. Amen and amen.